You might think that gold is pretty rare. However, there are a few metals rarer than gold. We are going to deep dive into the numbers. And also make sure you stay tuned until the end because I have some surprising finds coming up. Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. I made chapters for this video. You can see the titles of these chapters below in the description. Up first is a very misunderstood metal, silver. First, I would like to start off with apology one of two. I have stated in numerous videos the average ratio for silver to gold is eight to one. I have heard this from miners. I have heard this from very reputable sources. Yet, while doing research for this video, I came across some other figures that might dispute this 8 to 1 ratio, and that's where my apology comes in. In my recent research using figures from 2017, and in terms of abundance of metals in the crust, I have found the silver to gold ratio to be around 18 to 1. I'm not sure why there's so much differing information from so many sources. Is the 8 to 1 ratio correct? Is the 18 to 1 ratio correct? I truly do not know. So I apologize in advance if one of these or both of these are, are incorrect. A lot of YouTubers think that silver is a very common metal. And there's one thing that I can assure the audience is this is not a common metal. One of the phrases I hear often is silver is a byproduct of mining for gold. This is true. Um, and lots of different metals are pulled out of the earth when gold is mined. Metals are sprinkled out all over the earth's crust. So you're bound to find other metals while you're mining for one in particular. The problem comes from concentration. There's fewer and fewer concentrations out there of silver. There are some areas where concentrations of these metals is greater than others, and that's called deposits. If we were to mine a silver deposit, we would pull all sorts of metals out of the ground, like gold, copper, and iron. They would just be smaller amounts compared to finding it at another deposit for gold or a copper deposit. On average, though, silver exists in the Earth's crust at 0.075 parts per million. This translates to 0.000075% of the Earth's crust containing silver. For those counting at home, that's five zeros after the decimal point. I have found the information for gold to be the most consistent for years. No matter where I looked, when I looked, the number that I found for gold is 0 0.004 parts per million. This is a tiny number, and its rarity is one of the many reasons people flock to gold and hold it. Gold has been mined for well over 5,000 years, and it's been a staple currency for many economies leading into the 20th century. Speaking of mining, this video is brought to you by Gold Royalty Corps. Gold Royalty Corps isn't a mining company per se, they are a royalty company. You might have heard about royalties when it comes to celebrities who earn cash for a project years, even decades after it was completed. The Friends cast is an example. Almost 20 years after the show ended, the cast still makes $20 million a year off the show running in syndication. Their contract was 2% of the revenue per year. This isn't $20 million for all of them. This is $20 million for each cast member since Warner Brothers makes about $1 billion a year off the franchise. Gold Royalty Corps is similar, but for mining companies. What distinguishes Gold Royalty Corps from its peers is the company's business model, royalty and streaming. Understanding these two concepts is a completely different way of capturing the upside of mining activity with a de-risk form of exposure. For the mining sector, royalties are basically just a form of payment to a royalty holder by a property owner or property operator. Royalties are based on a percentage of the minerals produced and the revenues or profits generated from said property. The de-risk comes from the royalty company not having to mine for the gold themselves. Instead, they fund the best projects, let other companies do the legwork, and potentially profit from the gold discoveries. It's extremely beneficial to small and struggling mining companies. The costs associated with starting and running a mine are enormous. Royalty companies give these miners access to capital in exchange for royalties. 
With royalty companies, there are distinct advantages. You get exposure to commodity prices, fixed operating costs, no development, or sustainable capital costs, exploration, and expansion upside without the overhead typically associated with these advancements. Royalties are non-operating interest in the underlying project, so the holder is generally not responsible for contributing additional funds for any purpose, including capital and operating cost. One of the things I like is the limiting operating exposure royalty and stream holders get while benefiting from any resource expansion or upside generated by exploration success, mine life extensions, and operational expansions within the areas covered by the interest. If a mine exceeds its cost, it doesn't affect the royalties. In fact, it presents the royalty company an opportunity to get more royalty from the property in exchange for more capital. These royalties don't go away either. It's adhered to the property permanently even if there is a bankruptcy. And the business model allows the company to potentially generate revenues whether the gold price is rising or falling since royalty companies set fixed prices for mining outputs. Because of this model, it's not unusual for the royalty companies to outperform both the prices of gold and the gold miners. Royalty companies often hold very diverse portfolios, so if one of the properties stops producing precious metals, the royalty companies can lean on the other producers. Investors owning shares in a royalty company expose them to a number of different companies. Gold Royalty Corps is focused on a particular type of royalty known as Net Smelter Returns, or NSR. This is based on the value of production or the net proceeds received by the operator from a smelter or a refinery. Why should you bother with Gold Royalty Corps? Strong people in the industry lead it. Amir Adnani is the director. You might remember hearing about Mr. Adnani from my previous videos. He is the founder and chairman of Gold Mining Inc. and the CEO, president, and director of Uranium Energy Corps. He is on Fortune Magazine's 40 and Under one to watch list, a nominee for the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year, and has been identified as one of mining's future leaders by Mining Journal, a global industry publication based in the UK. He put a great team together for Gold Royalty Corps with top experts in multiple industries. Chairman and CEO David Garofalo is one such person. He was the former president and CEO of Gold Corps until its merger with Newmont in 2019. Former president and CEO of Hud Bay Minerals, these two men have run the largest gold companies in the world and now they run Gold Royalty Corps. There are so many more including the board of directors, all with experience and proven track records in the mining sectors. Gold Royalty Corps has a massive portfolio, 11.8 million ounces M and I measured and inferred and 14.6 million ounces inferred gold resources covering the United States, Canada, Brazil, Colombia, and Peru. The royalties on these assets extend far beyond gold, including potential copper and silver mineralization. All the properties shown are in the development stage, except for the Batiso asset, which is in the exploration stage project. Gold Mining Inc. created the IPO of Gold Royalty Corps, and they hit the New York Stock Exchange in February 2021 under the ticker symbol GROY. In addition to great assets, Gold Royalty Corps has a strong capital position of $24 million. This isn't typically seen with royalty companies. Seeing the potential with royalties, a large portion of Gold Royalty Corps' shares are held by gold market insiders like Eric Sprott. If you're interested in learning more about Gold Royalty Corps, or if you have any questions at all, please check out their website, goldroyalty.com. A lot of folks think platinum is rarer than gold. Technically, this is not true. If we were to compare parts per million, platinum is 0 0.005 ppm. Gold is 0 0.004 ppm, which is essentially the same rarity as gold. It's basically a rounding error. Where I think people get confused is in regards to mined platinum. Gold has been around for 5,000 years. A lot of time to pull this rare mineral out of the ground. Gold is treasured too as we basically account for nearly every ounce that's mined. So there's a large accumulation of gold out there. 
Platinum, on the other hand, was discovered more recently in the 1500s, and the process to refine it wasn't established until the 1800s. Less time to mine platinum, and because it's more difficult to refine, there's less mine platinum compared to gold. Yes, platinum is rare compared to gold in terms of mined amounts above ground, but in terms of amounts in the earth, technically gold wins out, but they are essentially the same. Palladium is primarily used for gasoline catalytic converters. Palladium is one of the metal that I have been wrong about and I am very sorry. In past videos, I've been saying that palladium is 15 times more rare than gold. This is not true. I usually check my numbers, so I don't know what sources I was using previously to come to that conclusion. It exists at 0 0.015 ppm, which is almost four times less rare than gold. It is three times less rare than platinum. I think this misconception is due to the mined palladium out there and its unequal distribution of deposits around the world. Currently, 40% of all mined palladium comes out of Russia. The rest from South Africa and other countries not known for their government stability. While it's less rare than gold, its price is far above that of gold, currently at $2,600 per ounce. A few weeks ago, it was around $3,600 per ounce. Rhodium is the rarest of the platinum group metals and the rarest mineral on this list. Abundance in the earth crust coming out to 0 0.001 parts per million. It is five times rarer than platinum and four times rarer than gold. Its price reflects this rarity too. As of April 10th, 2022, spot price for an ounce of rhodium is $19,100. Like platinum, it is used primarily as a catalyst. I'd like to thank Gold Royalty Corps for sponsoring this video. Your time is your most precious asset and I appreciate you spending it here with me. If you're interested in other topics like this one, Check out the other videos I have on my channel. Thank you all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins, and that is my two cents.